have now dried. They're kind of a bit sturdy, sort of plasticky feeling, but yeah, they're shiny and they should resist the ink. What do we need now for printing? First off, it's handy to have a non-slip mat. Yes, this is a baking mat and it's meant for dough and that kind of thing, but it's also non-slippy. Um, so it works really well for printmaking. In my experience, you'll find something that works for you. Next up, it's handy to have some masking tape. If you don't have a non-slip mat, and even if you do, um, because these tiles sometimes can kind of like bend up slightly at the edges, it's kind of handy sometimes if they're on the mat but they're still moving around slightly, you can put a little bit of tape behind them and hold them down. So, handy to have. Also, a spoon. You can find this in most kitchens. You'll be using it to push down on your print in trying to transfer the ink. There's also, if you have it, you can just do it with the spoon if you don't, but a rolling pin, you can give that a go. And also if you're a little bit further along in your printing journey and you have got a roller or a brayer as they're called, you can try one of these as well. Either way, it's just anything that you can find which will let you push down in a kind of even sort of manner. But the spoon will do you fine if you don't have any of the other bits. Next up, you need some ink. I have the SD water base paint and I have it today in black and turquoise. You also need a brush to put the ink on with. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. And I tend to have little pots uh, that I can just put a little squirt of ink into. You can have it on a palette or a tray or a piece of card, whatever. Um, you can even put it straight on the desk if that's your jam. <coughs> I just said jam. Lastly, you need paper. So I am using this. Now, if you are doing this in a more professional capacity and you have a press available to you, you can use thicker paper and Either way, you will need to be wetting it down, and I'll go into that in just a second. Um, but when you're at home, it is quite hard to get the pressure that you need to be able to transfer the print onto a thicker type of paper. So, we have this type of paper. This is mulberry, unbleached mulberry. This is just the natural one, but you can get it in white and different colors as well. This has worked quite well for me, but also just experiment. Um, your plates will last for multiple prints. So have a few different types of paper available. If you can, if you've got scraps of bits of different types, then try it out, see what works best for you. If you have some handy newsprint paper, which is this kind of like, kind of chip shop paper, uh, they often call it, that is useful to be able to put over your other paper so that you can press on this paper without tearing the other paper. And make sure you've got a sponge with you. So you can, if you want, um, completely dunk your paper in like a washing up bowl or whatever's big enough to take the size of your paper. I just have a board um, with a black bag over it and I get my sponge, I damp it a little and I literally just wipe over and dampen my paper. First off, I'm going to get my paper dampening now and then while I'm setting up the rest of my other stuff it can be drying out slightly. We don't want it to dry out fully, so just keep an eye on it. You might have to top it up with a little bit of dampness later as well. Now, I would say also, if you if you have um, access to a press, do do a blank print before anything else, just because it's fun. It's nice to see the imprints that you get. So what I mean by that is just moisten your paper, get it damp, then set out your plates as you would to do a print, but without any ink on them and then run them through the press. It's just nice to have that print later. And if you do a few of them, then you can play around with perhaps drawing ink onto the embossed pages, things like that. So just stuff to bear in mind, you know, have a think. Also, for your very first print, do not use your best paper. 
So this is not the mulberry paper, this is just standard sort of cartridge paper, which is a bit thick for me really, but it's just to get the prints going. Because, I don't know, it's like the law of the universe or something, but your first print very rarely seems to be your best print, unless that's just me. Has anyone else had that kind of um, experience? I don't know whether that's just me. So I've got this old bit of paper that's got holes in it and it's, it's sad that it wasn't having a nice life anywhere else. So I'm giving it a purpose. Okay, so that's dampening. I think I might do the other side as well because it's um, thicker paper. Whoopsie, just lobbed a load on my hand there. Okay, and it is gonna curl a bit. So, you know, don't worry about it. So that's damp but not too damp. And I'm gonna put that to one side for a moment. While that is sorting itself out over there, let's think of a way that we would like to arrange our little test plates. Now, because they're test plates, it doesn't really matter how we put them um, because it's all just playing around. But the nice thing is that we will be able to alter this at any given point throughout this process. And I feel like they might move slightly just because they've got like little pointy edges which are sticking up slightly. So I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit of tape behind some of the edges which aren't quite so, if you've got like a big flat expanse, that's more likely to hold down. But some of the light little tippy bits tippy bits they could swing about a bit okay am i changing my mind about where i'm putting these hmm, maybe i am now whether or not that will fit our paper i don't know but it, does, it doesn't really matter at this stage if it goes off because we're just doing a test yeah like we'll lose a couple of edges but that's fine that's fine just give them a wiggle oh sorry i'm wiggling the camera as well but if you just sort of do you know that does that make sense <laughs> just to see if they're staying in place okay so we have this. Now is the time to ink them. <laughs> the fun bit. Okay, so next we need the inks. I've got a little bit of black in there and a little bit of blue. And as you can see, you only need a tiny bit of ink at any given point. So always start with less and add more if you need it. Ink goes a long way. I have also, because um, I didn't say this, but I do have yellow as well. And I just kind of thought, oh, come on, why not? Also, get your brushes. Now I've got one for each color and I, I tend to use just old brushes for this because you need to be able to kind of get into all the kind of little crevices on these funny plates that you've made. Um, I quite like a kind of bristly, horse hairy type brush. Now, horse hair brushes, I don't like for anything generally, like painting wise, I don't know, they're a little bit meh for painting, unless you're doing sort of rough stuff, rough stuff. <laughs> for this, they're absolutely great. So if you've got an old brush or one you just don't really like using for anything else, then use it for this. So if you are using anything which is a lighter color to another one, then start with that first, because your other colors like the black will, will override everything else. Um, so hmm, let's just see. So let's just dab some on here, scratch it in. So this might take some time while you are getting the main layers on. So let's, let's speed up this video so you don't have to watch this whole thing. Right, so these are inked up. My paper is sort of damp to the touch, but not soaking wet. You'll, you'll start to find as you do more and more, you'll start to realize how much you need. So lay that on top and then grab a piece of old newsprint. I'm just gonna lay that on top of that. So here is where 
you can try out a few different methods of pressure. So first off, let's try a rolling pin. So pop it on the center, I would say, and then go from the center. Now, until you're happy that things aren't moving around too much, I would say control it with your hands in the middle. I'm no expert, but I don't know. I just feel like I have more control when I'm not using the edges. I'm doing it quite slowly so that I maintain control and just sort of keeping an even pressure on it. So that's one thing. If you want, you can, as I say, try your roller. So just do little rolls over. You can feel where your plate is underneath. So just follow where that is, or good old trusty spoon. So just feel where your edges are and where your textures are. And with a firm, but not like, you don't have to be all hulk about it. <laughs> you don't have to push super, super hard, just sort of firmly and just kind of, as I say, finding your edges and your textures. Keep going until you've covered every part of it. Okay. And as I said, this, so you, then you can take off your newsprint paper and you can kind of see how some of the textures have been coming through on this paper. Because I'm using a thicker paper, it won't come through, like you won't see it cut seeping through the page as much. But this is, as I say, just to get your plates going and to give you an idea of how much you need, how much ink you need to put on uh, and what textures are showing through better and what need more pressure than others. Okay, so I'm not saying this is gonna be amazing, but just for our first print, just to give you an idea, there's our first print, okay. So you can see it's not getting into, this kind of paper is not getting into all the crevices too deeply, but it is giving us textural print. So let's move on to the mulberry paper. As you can see, there is a lot of ink still on these plates. One print will not take off every bit of ink. So we could just put our mulberry paper straight onto this because there's still lots for it to pick up, especially because the paper that we used before didn't get into all of the crevices. And this is why it's quite handy to do that first print on a piece that we don't really care about because it gets off any excess ink um, without all of the rubbing and the scrubbing. Now, I say the rubbing and the scrubbing because as you get more into printmaking, um, you'll come across things like scrims and tartelan uh, <laughs> cloths and things which help you to kind of buff the plate, take off more ink that you don't need um, and it gets more precise prints. However, just for doing this at home, just getting into the kind of uh, methods, I suppose, of printmaking from a collagraph, this makes this is an easy way of starting without having to do the extra bits. It just in my opinion, but you know. I'm gonna try this without putting any more on because it looks to me like there's still plenty on there. So let me grab my mulberry paper. So with the mulberry, you can actually see the damp on there because it's such a thin paper. Let's lay that on there. And immediately you can see through the paper, your plate. I'm going to pop that over the top, like so, and I'm just gonna start with my hands this time, because with the mulberry paper, you do not need very much pressure to be able to start getting a good print. So your hands are your best tools to begin with, and your fingers are great because you can actually feel your way around all the little nubs, nublets, <laughs> that are in your plate. So just rub around, find all your edges and your textures 
And if you want to bring your spoon in, then bring your spoon in. And to be honest on this one, because it's not completely fresh ink, I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna use my fingers on this one. With the mulberry, you can see straight away how it is coming through on your paper because you can see through it. So now I've taken that off, I can actually go in on some areas where it doesn't seem to have seeped through quite as much, like this section here is where there was lace put down and that's quite a, a shallow texture in comparison to say these blobs of glue. So I'm just giving that a little bit of extra help there and the same with that end of the lace. And also I can kind of see that this sort of area here hasn't necessarily pushed through quite as much. Now, this isn't to say that it has to, because it's sometimes quite nice to have those different gradations, 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 of um, color and uh, texture. But you can kind of just see, see how you go. Just press the bits that you want to press and see what happens. And then the joy of printmaking is always the surprise. So pull it off and there we go. And I think that's quite nice. So when you're finished doing all of your printing, clean down your plates, clean down your area, just so that when you come back and if you want to use those plates again, they're all ready for you to do so. So for me, because these are water-based, I'm just taking some kitchen roll and some water. And I'm just going to take a plate and start dabbing off the main excesses of ink. Now, you won't get every part off, just so that you can kind of see the main plate coming back again. Um, or you can, like, you don't have to use kitchen towel for this, just whatever. Whatever, just to get the main excesses off. Any bits you leave on there will just sort of dry into the plate. And we just don't want it to build up excessively so that it mars any of the textures, especially the more subtle textures. If they get too clogged up with the ink, then they may not print better later. So do that for each plate. And you can also then just clean up your desk area. Don't know why that took me so long to think what the word was. I forgot to say, if you are using oil-based inks, uh, when you come to cleaning your plates, Again, just grab some sunflower or vegetable oil and put that on a cloth and then just clean your plates with that instead. So, what was the point of doing these, you probably are wondering, because they may not look like much, but what they are is a way into doing future projects and having a reference point to be able to do those with a bit more confidence, I suppose. So you can have a look, you can kind of go back to these little test plates because you tried lots of different things on there. You can go back and think, okay, what worked and what didn't? So when I go to make a proper plate, say, which is of an art piece that I want to make, what textures would work for that particular art piece. So you can see whether or not line textures worked or what material came through the best. So this was tissue paper scrunched into uh, lines as it were. This was the rice. This was string and felt. These were the lace pieces, which actually came out quite nice considering they were so shallow. These were the glue blobs and that was the acrylic paint on there. So quite subtle, but that's quite nice perhaps to have as a texture in a background or for something which doesn't require so much oomph, let's say. <laughs> this was scrunched up tin foil it's always one of my favourites that, for some reason it always comes out so good, but only when there's less ink 
on the plate. So again, you can kind of see what kind of things work with what amount of ink. So as you can see from the very first one that we did, which was full of ink, that particular one really soaked it all up and didn't have any, um, what word am I looking for? Kind of subtlety, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know whether that's the word. But on the second one, where there was less ink on the plate, all of those subtleties are coming through and the texture is a lot nicer. The same with these pieces. And of course, this was on a different type of paper as well, which was able to get into all of the tiny crevices of that very shallow texture. So yeah, you can kind of use this as a breakdown for future to be able to think, okay, this worked, this is what I want to go for in my next piece. And it also allows you to play around with inking up colours to see how you can merge colours in and keep them separate. It's just a great practice to do. And you can move on from this to future things. So this was a plate that I made the other day, which is far more figurative. A lot of Colograph is often abstract, like these are, because you can just create shapes with lots of different textures and it's a lot of fun, it's very therapeutic. Um, but I particularly find interest in it by using the medium to make more figurative illustrations. So this one is a pair of bunny ears, I don't know whether you can see because of the darkness of the plate, but it's a pair of bunny ears, there's two little bunny eyes, well, there is a hair actually, let's be specific. Um, but it's made from, he's got woolen eyes and wool kind of um, swirls and bits in the skyline. There's felt in these places here and there is scrunched tin foil in the foreground. Um, there is nothing really here. There was a little bit of glue, which was very, very subtle, and a little bit of paper, but it's mainly tissue paper that has been scrunched up for his fur. And this is a plain rectangle shape, but the joy of Colograph is that you can do any shape that you want. It really isn't limited, and you can do any size you want. So it, the world is your oyster with Colograph. I'll just show you what kind of prints that one created. So the very first print, as I say, it's always not the best. So this was one done on very basic paper that I didn't care about. And as you can see, it's come out very thick because it's the first print, it's on paper that doesn't seep in very well. And, but, it's, but you can see from that where the, the ink is coming out darkest and picking up most so that you, later on you can focus on other areas. So that was a great first print for that. I then tried a secondary print on that paper again just to see how a lighter inking would give me an effect. Now this one did um, move slightly under my pressure. So you can see there's a slight kind of blurring on there. But from this, I did find out that the lighter ink worked so well on the tinfoil sections and definitely in the ears. So that was really good for going onwards to use my better paper with. Lastly, this was the first one on the mulberry paper and I had inked it up slightly too much. Um, so it's very dark, but as you can see, stuff is coming through and it was a good learning lesson because the second print after that was actually one of my best and it was this one. And it managed to have darker areas where it, it looks kind of more moody. It did pick up some of the rolling woolen sections which I think really look like clouds and like a far away kind of um, landscape and it really enjoyed these little sections and even in the ears places where I hadn't actually put that much te much texture it was literally just some very very shallow um, glue kind of uh, scribbling with the PVA it even looks like tiny hairs inside his ears so 
I was super happy with that and it just kind of shows you that you do not have to be limited to be abstract, you do not have to be limited to be figurative, um, you can create whatever you want to create with Colograph. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful to you and that it has inspired you to give Colograph a go at home. If you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comments down below. Um, I will do my best to answer them. Um, if you would like to read a kind of more step by step about how this was done, I am creating blog posts over on my website. The first one is about creating a plate and it has images of this particular one in progress. So you can hop on over there, it is linked down below. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up. It really does help to support the channel. And um, if you would like future content like this, I'm going to do my best to create some. So please do subscribe. That would be awesome. And I hope to see you again next time. Keep making to make happy. Bye. <laughs>